This is one of those questions that really isn't that hard, but it takes a bit of thought to figure out what exactly it is you're supposed to do. So, uh, first of all, it's important to know that this is an inelastic collision because uh, the cars are um, essentially becoming one mass as they skid forward, according to the question. And what we're looking for here is the speed uh, right after the impact. So in, in a, the context of a typical uh, momentum question we'd get, we're looking for the, the V prime or the V2 or whatever you use to describe that. We're just looking for the velocity right after the fact. The problem, however, is that we're not given any information about the velocities. Uh, not only are we not given any uh, actual values for the speed or velocities, but we're also not given any relationship between them like we are in previous questions. Like there's no, the velocity is like twice the something something. Uh, and um, overall, we really don't have a whole lot to go on here. However, we do have a distance over which the car travels, which could give us um, the speed. Uh, could give us the speed if we're using one of the kinematics formulas. But in order to do that, we would need acceleration, which we also don't have. However, we do have the coefficient uh, friction, kinetic friction, uh, here. And we do still have both of the masses of the cars. So what we can do is use the force formulas to figure this out. Now, the only force that is going to be acting on this object right here is the force of friction. So that is what I'm going to put on this side. And as for the masses, since again, we're talking about the period of time that's taking place after the collision, we're going to use the combined mass of the two cars. So for us right here, it's going to be 980 plus 2300. And for acceleration, well, that's what we're trying to find. Now remember, for, uh, for the force of friction is equal to the normal force of the object times the friction coefficient. Uh, so for our friction coefficient, it's going to be 0 0.80, and that's going to be times the normal force, which is equal to the mass times um, the, for the force of the acceleration due to gravity. So it's going to be 9.81 times the total mass, which is going to be the same as the sum of this. So in this case, that's going to be 32.80. And all that is equal to, again, the sum of the mass here, 3280 times the acceleration. Now to solve for A here is pretty simple. Both these masses are going to cancel out and we're just left with multiplying uh, 0 0.8 times 9.81, which is what I did actually, uh, which would give us 7.8 meters per second squared. Uh, some would say, some would ask, well, by the way, why didn't you set the friction negative? Well, and I'm going to say that it doesn't really matter because in this case, we're talking, we're looking for the, the acceleration or force acting against the car to begin with. So in some context, it makes sense to look at this as positive. And besides, using a positive value for this does make our later math a little bit easier. And it'll, and remember that whatever signs you use for each force, ultimately doesn't matter too much as long as they're consistent with one another and how they interact. So I'm going to use this acceleration as positive, even though the car is decelerating over this time period. So you could, so instead you could just think of this acceleration here as the deceleration rate. Now I'm going to plug this into the kinematics formula to solve for the initial velocity, because what we want to find now is the initial velocity over this time period before we, we can be able to use that, uh, for we'll be able to apply that to the conservation of mass formula and find out what the mass was before the collision. So remember that the formula for V naught, if you remember, recall from the kinematics unit, is going to be equal to the square root of two times acceleration times the change in the x value, which in this context is going to be 
V prime, the final, uh, the V after the collision, which is what we're trying to find in this step. Uh, the square root of 2 times our acceleration, 7.8 times the change in distance, which has given us to be 2.6 meters, which is equal to about 6.4 meters per second. So now that we have this, now we can plug that into our uh, momentum formula. So, uh, so uh, remember, this is before and after the collision that we use for these formulas. So the initial uh, mass that we start with, uh, remember the uh, conservation of mass for, of momentum formula is the momentum of one object plus the momentum of the second object, which in this case, since one of the cars is at rest, our total momentum on the left side is just going to be the sports car. So first, so we're going to start off with 9.80 uh, times the V that we're looking for. We still don't have the original V. That's that's our final answer, whatever that is. Which is going, which since the other car is at rest, that's going to be equal to zero, and we thus don't need to worry about it. And uh, so the final mass and volume we have, or the final mass and velocity we have, then is the total mass of the uh, the cars put together, which is going to be 30. To 80 times uh, our final velocity as 6.4. So now just multiplying these two together and dividing that by 980 would give us 21 meters per second as a final velocity. And or not final velocity, but this would be this would be the velocity of the car just before it collides with the stopped car. There you have it.